I think I have a really good um, analogy or metaphor to explain your atheism to someone who um, doesn't really get the um, explanation that theistic claims haven't met their burden of, burden of proof. Okay. Okay. So, Do I have to toss um, out the gumballs? Is it time for something new? <laughs> have you seen the gumballs? You know the gumball. Oh, yes. Okay, so... Guessing the number of gumballs. Go ahead. Uh, Basically, okay, let's imagine I'm standing at a roulette wheel. I'm I'm sure you know where the roulette wheel is. I used to live in Las Vegas. Yeah. Right, okay. So, but instead of numbers (laughs) on the board, it's all the various faiths of the world and the denominations within it's a pretty big board. Okay. And let's just say that um, I can get to all the spaces easily. Okay. Okay, now I'm holding on to a chip and this chip represents my belief. And what I mean by belief is my confidence in something being true. Okay. Okay. Now let's say there's a representative for each faith behind me. All of them, the most fervent believer in their particular religion. And one of them is going, oh, put it on Shintoism. And another one says, no, 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 put it on the Muslim faith. Mm -hmm. And yet another tells me, don't don't be daft, put it on Hinduism. And if you were there and you still believed, you'd be telling me to put it on Christianity. Right. Okay, so there's one of three things I can do here. I can leave the casino with my chip saying not even God himself would um, convince me to put down my chip. Okay. The second option is I could turn around, I could listen to everyone who's telling me where to put my chip, I could choose one of them to believe and then put my chip wherever I want to, let the wheel, uh, let the ball spin around in the wheel and land wherever um, it lands. And if it lands on my spot, ooh, I get the prize of heaven, uh, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's the third option where I can hold on to my chip until the actual God shows up to the table and tells me where to put that chip. Now, which one of those three options do you think is the most logical one to take? I I can actually help you with this one if you'd like, because in this analogy, that wheel is infinitely large. The number of places that you can put things, right? Otherwise, you get this Pascal's wager type situation, but we don't know how many religions have been out there, and we don't know how many more religions are going to be created after us. And so in this situation, you have a board that is wider than you'll ever be able to reach. And it doesn't matter how far you throw your chip, you'll never be able to put it on any one spot because it can be anything. And so in this situation, you are in a vast, vast area where... There's no end. There's no end to the wheel. There's no end to the spots that you can put things. And so I don't think putting down that chip would be reasonable in any point. But Even if the actual higher power showed up? Well, you'd have to prove that there's a higher power. And the the problem with I, I have with the analogy is one, I mean, how do you identify that the God you're talking to actually even exists? Because I know people who have personally, physically met their gods. I know, I, I know a Bast worshiper because the Egyptian cat-headed goddess appeared in his house, spoke to him audibly, vi- was visible to him, and then was tangible when she embraced him and bade him to become her disciple. How do you know when you meet your God that it's actually your God? Because, hey, I wasn't there. I didn't see her. I haven't met her. But I have a very strong suspicion, as does almost anybody else I talk to, that she was not really there. Yeah. So the problem with the analogy is, I mean, you want to you want to lay down your chip, and and you have all of these people telling you that 
after you die, some essence of yourself will continue on in some other form. And you're expected to put down something, your chip on a roulette wheel, that it's one of the, that the thing that you've already presupposed, that you're going to survive your death, is according to one of these 32 different mythologies that they just laid down. That's not the case at all. It's, it's yeah. more like, you know, it's like being blindfolded and throwing a basketball into the hoop. Okay, if there's an afterlife, then you'll make that hoop. Otherwise, the ball will go somewhere else, and that's what the probability really is. And that doesn't even go into the idea of, you know, if there's a God and they are loving and they let you, they put you in a situation where you have to choose and every single poor choice is suffering and pain. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think it's, a, it's not a great argument to go with. I think it's too close to Pascal's wager. And I think Arn has a really great point that you're presupposing that you will survive your own death when in actuality we, don't have, we have no evidence that that is the case. And it's not equal, right? The, the, the spot to put nothing happens is not the same, is not the same size as Hinduism. It's not an equal choice. No. <laughs> uh, Sean, the, the physicist Sean Carroll did a marvelous presentation in San Diego where he, he explains how it's impossible for there to be a posthumous you know, afterlife. So I mean, if you're looking at the greater probability, it it's like you know the 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 the, the basketball in the hoop or the or throwing the dart into the bullseye while blindfolded. Every other option is more likely. So yeah, it's it's more like winning the lottery that there is a afterlife at all. And should you win that lottery, then you get to choose with your lottery winnings which of the 32 <laughs> yeah. options to put your bet on. But but don't spend that money until you win it. <laughs> 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 All right, Jerry. Uh, this is a good call. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, well, basically, the, uh, the moral of the analogy would have been um, if I have an immortal soul, I am not going to entrust what to do with it on the words of mortals. I... I don't know. I, I just can't follow because I wouldn't give the premise that I have a mortal soul. And so I can't follow yeah, that's past why that. I said if, if, if yeah. I have one. I mean, if you did, you'd still run up against the same issues. I'm trying to remember. Ambrose Bierce, I think it was, that said that, uh, that, that faith is someone uh, speaking with authority but without evidence about things without parallel thing, hmm. something along I, I just completely butchered that to death but I, I, it, was, I, it was something along those lines you, you, people who have no idea what they're talking about pretending to know things they don't know is essentially what that boils down to 